Hi, Elise Dewsbury here with part three in my vlog series on how to get no feedback from Elise. Um, now in my first couple of vlogs I talked about the theme of your musical or what your musical is about and the lead of your musical, who your musical is about. And today I want to talk about plot. And plot to me is just the series of events that you concoct and put together in order to accomplish your story. Now you might say to me, well that sounds like semantics, what's the difference between story and plot? Aren't they interchangeable? Uh, perhaps, but for my definition, uh, for me the story is that larger issue that, that, that relates back to your theme. So what your musical is about, that's your story. It's about the emotional content, the um, love conquers all, or we should all get along, or whatever it is, that, the theme that you're trying to tell, that is your story. Your plot is just the series of actual events that happen during your musical while you are telling your story, or more to the point that actually allow your story to unfold. Now for me, um, I think it's really important that you have the right kind of balance between story and plot. Uh, for example, if you have a musical in which the the plot is is really really uh, dominant, and and what happens is the story winds up serving the plot. Um, in in plays that would be most uh, most represented by, for instance, a farce, where the plot is really all important. The story is a very thin sort of a thing uh, that is designed just to hang uh, all of the mistaken identities and slamming doors and people running hither thither and yon. It's all just an excuse for hilarity and nonsense. The story isn't really important. Um, now I think a musical example of a show that follows that kind of idea would be something like uh, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Now I enjoy that show on Broadway very much, but I have to say that I think it is it is a, an instance of story serving plot. The, the only story there really is that the, uh, the lead character wants to get married, needs money, so he decides to kill off all of his family so that he can get an inheritance so that he can get married. Um, now hilarity ensues and a lot of cleverness and wittiness, but I don't know that we ever really care about that character because we never really um, we, we can never really condone his decision to uh, just kill his entire family there's not a reason for it he doesn't have a journey he doesn't learn anything he simply accomplishes these series of events in order to kill everybody off to get all the money and it's funny and witty and wonderful and you should be so lucky to have a show on Broadway but for me I'm more interested in um, in the power and the longevity of a show where the uh, the plot serves the story. That's where the plot is there simply to help you accomplish the story, and the story is more important. Um, there are many examples of that, but the one I would cite right now would be Sweeney Todd. The reason I'm picking that one is because in Sweeney Todd, you could make a case that that lead character, Sweeney, is every bit as hateful as the character in um, uh, A Gentleman's Guide because he, you know, decides he murders a whole lot of people on his way towards the judge to get his revenge. The difference is that in Sweeney Todd, we totally understand the the horror and the angst and 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 what it was that drove Sweeney to want to kill the judge and what has brought him to this moment. So. It isn't that we condone his actions, but we deeply understand them. They are so deeply motivated. Um, and uh, and so we care about him. We care what happens. And at the end of the day, he doesn't just get, it isn't just silliness and a lark of him, you know, saying, and so I killed everybody and I got revenge. Uh, he eventually discovers that revenge um, isn't all it's cracked up to be. And he winds up sacrificing himself at the end. And the, and the people who survive are the innocents. Anthony and Joanna, who have not been involved in the revenge plot. So in that instance, I feel like there's so much more to sing about when you have story at the forefront and the songs can have so much more power. Doesn't mean you can't have silly fun songs, plenty of them in Sweeney Todd, but it also allows you to have a lot more depth and, uh, and, 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 and just go a lot deeper with your show. So I'm an advocate of, um, of, uh, of plot serving story as opposed to story serving plot. But whatever way you decide to go, I would strongly recommend that you make sure that your plot, the series of events of your plot, follow the logic that is required by the universe of your musical. 
And I say it that way because I, I don't want to imply that all plots have to be logical based on the rules of the current universe that we all live in. They do not, by any means. They only have to serve the rules of the universe you've created. So if you're writing your show in a realistic time period and, um, and, and you expect it to be realistic, then it should follow realistic rules of logic. Um, if, if, if you're you know, setting your show, um, if it's a Harry Potter musical and there are wizards and people that fly and whatnot, then it will have its own set of rules. But you need to figure out what those rules are and then you need to stick to them. Uh, and uh, so you need to really make sure that you set up the rules for your universe and make sure that your plot is following that logically. Now, I would strongly recommend that one of the best ways to make sure that that's happening with your plot is to outline your plot. And anyone who knows me knows that I am a huge advocate of outlining and spending a fair bit of time on outlining uh, before you move into actually writing your musical. Um, and not, it's, not, uh, it's not most uh, uh, teams' um, favorite part of the process, but I think it's an essential one. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail right now in this vlog about outlining and, and how I uh the, how I think it is a useful tool and how to use it in order to make it a useful tool. I have an entire course on that at uh, uh, available at writingmusicaltheater.com. It's called the Outlining Lab. You're free to, you're welcome to take that. Maybe I'll have a vlog later on where I go into more detail about outlining. But for now, suffice to say, I think outlining is vital and it it is a tool that helps you make sure that your character, your lead character, is going on a journey, that your theme is be, is, is 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 clear, and that your plot is following logic in order to make all that happen. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say, I think, is uh, that I, I really, uh, I, I think the best thing to remember about a plot is to remember that your story is not about your plot. Your plot is not what your musical is about. Uh, to me, your plot is simply a tool that you use to allow you to illuminate the journey that your lead character is taking as your lead character delivers your theme. Uh, so if you think of it that way, that's how you get to a, um, uh, a story, a plot that serves your, st your story instead of the other way around. Use your plot as a tool that allows, that takes your, your lead character on a journey that illuminates your theme. Um, and that's it for now. See you next month.